Yeah, hello and welcome to another update video about Ethereum. So, so far, um, the move to the upside runs as expected. It's just a little bit of volatility that came in due to the durable goods numbers. I believe that shaked the market up, shaked, shook the market up a little bit. Um, so we see a little bit of up and down, a bit of a roller coaster. I'm extremely glad that the target I communicated in the previous video was reached. Um, with uh, yeah, perfect accuracy, I would say um, it was the triangle target and as they say in the um, in the Elliott Wave Principle book, these triangle targets, they are often met with dramatic precision as it was in this case. So we talked about in the previous video that this wave four here possibly worked out as a triangle. It was actually a very nice triangle count, a so-called running triangle. A running triangle indicated that it was quite, let's say quite bullish, yeah, because a running triangle makes a new price extreme. So it did highlight that in the last video, then we counted A, B, C, D, E, um, gave you a price target by taking the height of the triangle at the beginning, go to the low of the E wave, and then we talked about target here of 1663. Based on Fibonacci targets, it should have ideally pushed a little higher, but uh, I think 1674, but this was the triangle target that needed to be observed. So we reached it and sold off immediately. So this is now a bit on shaky grounds because ideally this moved down um, wouldn't have been that um, yeah, dramatic, but uh, we'll see, you know, it's durable goods numbers came in lower than anticipated. So, um, so uh, that is typically bad for the dollar, good for, good for crypto, because you've got that at least temporary uh, inverse relationship. So let's see if that pullback now can sustain, because if that's correct, that count, yeah, then we rallied now in three complete waves. It can always break down after three waves, this is now interesting and important if we get a fourth and a fifth. In f in this support area, this is highlighted where wave four should turn around into a wave five to give us one more high, then we have a more complete wave one, okay? So this is now, it basically, again, you can, it's so nice to see these FIPs working out because target for the wave four, an ideal target is typically the 38.2 FIP level, here at 16.38, and it came down and with, you know, just accuracy of not even, you know, just, to the cent, yeah, uh, it touched that level. Now, what I'm a bit, wouldn't say concerned about, but is how strongly it came down, quite impulsive. But you know, e eventually we just need to turn around here. So however that looks like, it needs to turn around here. At least as long as it holds 1630, we can get a fifth wave. If we drop below that, then we might have to adjust the count and it will indicate more strongly that this was just an A, B, C rally and we are heading down in five waves next, yeah? So that's sort of really now the key the key level here to watch out for. If we drop below that, okay, then pay attention to 1599 as support, so this support area down here. And if we lose that, then it's all about again, we need to hold 1525. If we lose 1525, this entire scenario um, is not valid anymore, or at least not likely anymore. So we just looked at the micro chart here, but as you might remember, if you've been watching these videos, for a while, we've got the two key scenarios on the chart. The primary expectation is that we get this sort of March rally to um, yeah, 1900, 1950 plus in a wave five extension. We can go with that and give it the benefit of the doubt as long as the wave four, five, no, as long as the wave four support area is holding down here. Actually not the wave four support, it was wave two support. Yeah, as long as that's holding. And um, if it loses that, yeah, if we go below 1525, it's very likely we get into this larger support area here between 1488 and 1218. Um, so we're looking at, at probably in larger ABC correction, A wave, B wave, C wave, yeah, where the A wave might react here to the upper part of that support area and then the C wave would come down somewhere there. So A, B, C. And uh, this is where I will, will scale in for the long term. So we, we'll see, we'll see, I mean, um, it's still um, it's still a little bit uncertain, but that's what markets are, you know. Important is that it did hold the support area down here on the weekend. And uh, what it now needs to do, it needs to break above the 1655 level. It needs to, it did that, but it needs to break above and hold it. Yeah, so it lost it immediately. So we'll see, I mean, this could, um, I don't know if it's gonna become like some kind of an inverse head and shoulders, I don't know. It, it, it ideally holds this level, yeah. Okay, if it doesn't hold this level, then we might be able to count this as a larger five wave move. One, two, three, four, five. 
and then obviously these support areas down here that are highlighted to you get more important again. So um, it's not all lost if we lose 1630, but we might then have to count this entire move as a wave one. But this is a short term trend reversal area. I highlighted in an orange because it's coming down quite impulsively. So it's all about do we hold this support? And if not, then it will hit these lower support areas. And this yellow support area is still valid. Yeah. So if we get back into it, we can make another attempt to turn around. Okay, that's my update about Ethereum. I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.